Hi, and uh, greetings to everyone who is watching this video. Thanks for watching this. Uh, today we'll be discussing about uh, risk management uh, through Microsoft Project Professionals. So what happens is there will, there will be the risk across your project. Uh, in the Microsoft Project Professional, we can create the risk register and we can manage the risks at the task level. So I'm going to uh, introduce you with uh, you know, some overview of the risk, risk management, how to calculate the score, risk score. And uh, then I'll be, I will be demonstrating you how to create the risk register using Microsoft Project Professional. Stay with me. So let's start with a little risk overview, the definition of the risk. What is the definition? It says an uncertain event or set of events that if it should occur, will affect the achievement of objectives. So every project, you will have the objectives, will have the goals which, have, which will have the uh, outputs uh, to be delivered and outcomes to be achieved. Now, while we are on the project, we are set to, uh, to achieve these objectives, there could be uncertain event, events or set of events. Now, these are uncertain. That means uh, there is a probability, there is a possibility that it may occur or it may not occur. So if it occurs and when it occurs, it will affect your, your achievement of objectives in a positive or negative. Okay? So that's the risk. And a risk is measured by a combination of the likelihood of a perceived threat or opportunity occurring. Okay? And the magnitude of its impact on objectives. So how do I measure the risk? How do I calculate the risk score? I multiply its probability of occurrence. And if it occurs, then what will be the impact of, of that particular risk? So whether 100% uh, of my project objectives will be impacted, whether only 10% of my project objectives will be impacted, I will I will be calculating that impact and I'll, I'll be multiplying it with the probability of that risk. Now, while these are the two, uh, two critical factors to calculate the risk score, but the but the likelihood and the impact will uh, will also be driven or will also be dependent on uh, you know, many of these other aspects of the. Uh, risk. Now, what are those? Let's have a quick look. We will. We won't go into the details of it, but it is important to understand what is behind this likelihood and impact of the risk. Right? So, uh, let's go on that one. The first one uh, we'll talk about is the exposure. So, if a certain event occurs, how many objectives of my projects, how many outputs of my project, how many outcomes of my project? will be exposed to that risk, will be impacted by that risk, okay? Uh, then, uh, you know, then I'll, I'll jump to the proximity. Now, how far or how close on the time scale the risk is? That will tell me the, the proximity, whether the risk can occur today, tomorrow, or after six months in my project. That is my proximity of the risk. Uh, then how much is my my project's risk appetite how much risk my project can take how much risk my organization uh, is is willing to take then uh, what are the tolerances set what do you mean by tolerance if i can take uh, uh, risk of plus minus 5% plus minus uh, 20% how much is my tolerance uh, then what is the risk contingency budget set for my project. Uh, the next factor tells us what is the speed at which the risk is nearing. So on my proximity scale, how fast the risk event is moving. That will be the velocity. Then what are the risk response types? So on the right hand side, if you see there's a table which gives us some risk responses, we'll, we'll go about them in detail in just a moment. And uh, I have to I have to identify the risk owner and the risk action owner. So these are the two critical roles uh, who will be taking the action if and when the risk occurs. So as we saw in the definition, it is a perceived threat or opportunity. So risk is 
So it could be positive or it could be negative. The positive risk is called as opportunity, the negative risk is called as a threat. Now, for threats and opportunities, there are some responses which are common and there are some responses which are different, which are specific to whether it's a threat or opportunity. So let's uh, look at them and uh, I'll, I'll go from bottom up in the table. The first one it says prepare contingent plans. So, in case of a threat or opportunity which has been identified, that event may occur, and if and when it occurs, it, it would be a threat or it could be an opportunity. My first response would be I will create the contingent plans, but I will not take any action at this point of time. When I see the risk approaching, when I see the risk in the near proximity, then only I will trigger these plans. But when, when I'm, yeah, I have identified the risk, when I have uh, you know, identified that as a threat or the opportunity, I will just prepare the contingent plan. The another response, the common another response for threats and opportunities is accept them as it is. So if you see a, a risk uh, which, which may occur in next week quarter uh, and which could present some opportunities to you, you just decide to accept it. Whatever it may happen, I'm going to accept, whether it's a threat or opportunity. You can share the threat or opportunity with your, with your partners, correct? Uh, that in that case, whether it's a loss in, in case of the threat or whether it's a, it's a profit, whether it's a benefit in, in case of the opportunities, you'd be sharing it with someone. Maybe a person, maybe an organization, maybe a team, uh, that depends. But then you will be sharing the, the benefits or the loss okay? in case that risk event occurs. The another response to the threat or opportunity is, is to transfer it. It's to transfer it to some third party, whether uh, it is your partner, whether it is your uh, supplier, or it could be anybody again. Uh, that entity could be uh, any other entity, but you are transferring that risk to them. Then there are some specific responses. Uh, you can either exploit or enhance the opportunities. You, you, you try to do better with that opportunities. You try to enhance it. You try to get the maximum out of those opportunities. Or you try to avoid and reduce uh, the threats. So in case of avoidance of the threat, you don't even go on that path. You completely ignore it. You avoid it. Or if it is necessary, you have to pursue some activities and there is a risk in it, there is a threat in it, then you try to reduce that. Okay. Uh, you know, so these are the these are the risk responses. Now there are some perspectives within the organization, there are some risk perspectives. See, because uh, global economy uh, seeing a downtrend is also a risk to my business, correct? And uh, increase in the license cost of a software, okay, which I need to, to execute my project and to, to develop, to create the outputs which are expected. That is also a risk to my project. Now, this increase in the cost of a licenses of the software which is required for my project is very much at the project level or the product level. So it, it, is, a, it is a project perspective or the product perspective which, uh, which, which will identify this as a risk. Whereas the, the global upturn or the downturn of the, of the events or the financial markets, etc., those will be at the strategic level. Those, those types of the risks uh, Will be identified at a very strategic level. Now, in between, you you have the portfolio perspective, program perspective, and then uh, when your when your product and your services are in the operational phase, you will have the risks related to the operations. So that will that will be um, identified, documented under the operational perspective of the risk. Now, today, what we are going to see next is the project perspective risks. That's what our focus is whatever the project perspective risk that I have, and even going to, to the detail level of the risks associated with particular tasks. For example, let's say you are expecting some 
uh, some material to be delivered by your supplier. Right? And you see that there is a risk that this delivery of the material may get delayed by say two weeks or three weeks because of X, Y, Z reason at your at your supplier skin. Now you want to highlight this risk. You want to tell. You want to uh, capture this risk. And that too, not in a long risk resistance where you have all the other uh, risk identified from the different perspective, but you want to highlight this risk along with your task so that your project planning, your scheduling, your resource allocation, uh, you know, your dependent tasks, so your critical path task, all those will be monitored very closely from this risk perspective as well. So we are going to go at that level and I'm going to demonstrate uh, how I have configured uh, you know, the, the risk register in uh, Microsoft Project Professional. So let me take you here. Now uh, this, uh, I, am, I am assuming I'm considering that as a prerequisite, uh, you are familiar with uh, the basics of uh, Microsoft Project Professional. This is Microsoft Project Professional. This is our Gantt chart view. Now, in the Gantt chart view, if you see, this is a very generic activities or a project plan, wherein there are some summary tasks and then there are some brief level activities and then there are milestone activities. Also. Now, for these activities, I have added some resources there, and for those resources, I have this uh, resource sheet created, correct? And uh, no, I have added some cost, so it is giving me the cost calculations also. There is a schedule which I have created. There is a task relationships in terms of the predecessor successor that I have defined here, along with some duration. And so this is your very basic Microsoft project plan, MPP file, if you can see. And this, what I did, I created a risk register view. I created a custom view with a risk register. Okay. Now, if you see for these first task, task 1.1, 1 .1, uh, there is the risk category available, but I haven't categorized it. Now I can categorize it. I'm saying whether is it a is it a risk on the schedule, is it a risk on the cost, quality, resource, scope, or external. Okay. So if I say this is the extra, sorry, this is a schedule related risk, then I can type uh, this. There is possibility of delay in material delivery. So I'm actually entering the risk description. Then I am I am adding the value for risk probability, likelihood probability. Many times these two terms are used interchangeably. Uh, some, some other time we'll get into the details of how they are different and used. But currently let's, let's assume that it is the same meaning that we are going to use, the risk likelihood and risk probability. Now, how it is, say I'm saying very high, high, medium, low, and very low. These are the uh, risk probability buckets or the values I have created. I'll say, say it is a high probability, high possibility, high likelihood of this risk occurring. Now, if this occurs, because it's the first task, and it, it will impact very heavily. So, though the probability is high, my impact will be very high. Now, when I change these values, you will see my risk score is changing. And if you see, there is a quantitative risk score behind it. And from the presentation perspective, I'm using some icons. Uh, so if I if I classify this, if I change this classification, if I say very high, then it will be the threat. And the score has increased to 25. Okay. Uh, then you can add, uh, you know, which objectives are getting impacted. So I'm saying objective one and uh, two will be impacted. Or you can say whichever your outputs, uh, you can mention them here. This is a free text field. Correct. And what is the status of the risk? So I'm saying, is it a new risk identified? Is it uh, assessed? Is it, uh, do I have the response ready? So do I have the contingent plan ready? I, do I have, have I identified what type of response I want to give it? Or is it like I have already responded to it? So the risk was identified and it was it was seen to be very moving very fast. The velocity was very fast. The proximity it was very near. So you know we have responded. We have taken the action. Right? Or whether the risk is close. So during the during the project when the risk gets close, we can even mark it as close. So I, I will say that 
you know, we have assessed this risk, or I can say this, we have identified this risk newly. Similarly, there are there is some uh, you know data which you can see pre-populated. Right? Now this is your risk register which will help you to capture the risks at the task level. Right? And you can add the multiple risks also. Right? Both like these builds are uh, uh, free text, so you can go on adding multiple uh, risks there. Right? Now I have created a custom view. Based on this custom view, we can create the report. We can we can attach this to uh, uh, you know any of our inbuilt reports with that. And whenever I want, I can go back to it. Now, uh, the way it will help you is uh, when you when you share your project plan, you can also share in the same MPP file your risk register. So you don't have to uh, juggle between uh, two or more tools like. Your, your project plan schedule in MPP file, MS Project Professional, and then your risk register in the Excel or some other tool. You can maintain your risk register along with your project plan. Now, to achieve this view, what I have used is I have used a custom phase. Right? Uh, I have used this task level custom phase. Similarly, we can create a risk register for the resource level also, which I'll explain you in, in, the, in the next video. Um, so here, if you see, I have defined these fields. Now, these fields also have got some different types. So look at this uh, risk probability. Risk probability has got the lookup values. Very high, high, medium, low, very low. So the values that what you saw here in the, in the uh, sorry, probability, very high, high, medium, low, very low. Those are coming from this. Those are coming from this predefined values, the lookup values. So that is how we use the text type of custom field at the task level. So similarly for risk impact, I have defined the values very high impact, high impact, medium, low. Uh, then the risk category also, there are lookup values, schedule, cost, quality, resource, scope, exper uh, external. Then uh, risk description though is, it is a free text fit. So I can go on adding the text data in this fit. Uh, again, risk status is the lookup value. And uh, yeah, so these are the custom fields that I have defined. So making the use of the custom fields feature in Microsoft Project Professional, I have created this risk register, right? Okay, and then uh, I'll, I'll take you back to the slide for a moment. Uh, let's see how do we do the risk analysis. So to calculate the probability and the impact for threats and opportunities, we will we will define these buckets. And this is what exactly you have seen, uh, I, have, I have configured in Microsoft Project Professional. And this is how your risk scores are. Now here in, in the Microsoft Project Professional, you can define all these values for the risk score, how you want it to be calculated. Okay. You can make it percentage, you can make it decimal, you can make it as a whole number. These values uh, will be predefined or pre-populated uh, numbers assigned with each of the bucket, and then the, uh, then the actual risk score will be calculated. You can create this kind of graphs, charts using reports in the Microsoft Project Profession. Okay. Thank you so much for watching this video. And uh, in the next video, I'll talk about the risk register at the, at the resource level. Then we'll keep on exploring some more advanced features in Microsoft Project Profession. Hope you liked it, you found it uh, informational. Uh, please reach out to me, the details are given here. Uh, for any of your queries or anything you would like to understand more about Microsoft Project Professional or risk management or overall project management. Thank you so much for watching this video.